Deshaun, why, sh why should you be believed instead of more than 20 women? Um, I can't speak on, on what people um, opinions are um, because everyone have their own opinions. But what I can continue to do is tell the truth. And that is I've never assaulted or disrespected or harassed any woman in my life. Like I said before, I was raised differently. That's not my DNA. That's not my culture. That's not me as a person. And that's not how I was raised. And for me, that's to continue to push forward and, and show people that who I really am. And a lot of people haven't met me before. A lot of people haven't spoke to me before. A lot of people haven't been in the same environment, environment as me before. And I want to continue to open that up and be able to have people, you know, come to me and, and be able to talk to me about you know certain things Are you trying to settle the 22 civil suits um, that's not my intent my intent is to continue to clear my name as much as possible and that's what I'm focused on now if by saying that's not my intent that's Pete Carroll not my intent then that means he's gonna settle the cases mm hmm and he can't come out and say it. look this is where it becomes very difficult if he says, yes, I am motivated to settle the cases, you may as well just hand Tony Busby a blank check. That's the problem. Yeah, sure. You have to at least create the impression that you're going to fight it because you can't let Tony Busby think that there's an urgency to settle. But at some point, as I said last week and earlier today, you just got to do what you got to do. And there are devices. We talked about the offer of judgment last week. There are ways for the plaintiffs to end up realizing, oh, wait, if I don't take this and I don't do better than this at trial, I may have to actually pay out of my own pocket. Well, I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, I better go ahead and settle this case. So there are ways to put pressure on them within the confines of the legal system. But, you know, Miles, look, th this is why I think they just shouldn't have done this today. If all he's going to do is recite, I never assaulted anyone, I never harassed anyone, I never disrespected anyone, I wasn't raised that way, I was raised by a single mother and my two aunties, and I, you know, it, it's not, in not my DNA. I mean, you could see he was remembering everything he possibly could from the statement that was written for him, and that's fine, because he's got 22 pending cases. But maybe you just don't do the press conference because of the 22 pending cases. Because again, this is supposed to be a happy day in the history of the Cleveland Browns not what it ultimately became. So at some point, somebody need to take a step back and say, you know, they say they want an adult in the room at quarterback. That's why they wanted to get rid of Baker Mayfield. There needed to be an adult in the room when it comes to whether or not they should do this press conference and say, we probably shouldn't, at least not now, at least not until these cases are settled. Well, I mean, if you're if you don't do it, then what are you? I mean, you're basically then sending Kevin Stefanski out there, you know, next Monday, Tuesday, whenever the AFC True. coaches True. talk at the, at the breakfast to answer all of these things and answer again. Why has it? Why have you not, you know, said anything? Why have you not introduced to Sean Watson? Why haven't Jimmy and D Haslam spoken? Why hasn't Andrew Berry spoken? And you're you're leaving that for Kevin Stefanski. So. I, that's sort of where you and I would disagree on whether or not they should have held the press conference. But there are yeah. two things that, you know, what he was talking about kind of makes me think about and he being Deshaun Watson in that clip that we just saw. One is Jimmy Haslam in the Zoom press conference that uh, Jimmy and D Haslam had with local reporters after the uh, in-person press conference because Jimmy and D Haslam said they had a previous international engagement. So that's why they weren't there in Cleveland. So Jimmy Haslam said, we're comfortable they will make the right call when he was asked about Deshaun Watson potentially settling these 22 cases. So I think that the Browns have a good idea of where this is headed. And like you said, Deshaun Watson can't just come out and say, you know, oh my gosh, yes, I'm so motivated to settle all of these different cases, et cetera, et cetera, because then that's not good for what he's ultimately trying to do is basically as a negotiation tactic. The second thing that it made me think of, when Sean Watson starts talking about, you know, I was raised by a single mom. I was, I know I have all these aunties. It's not in my DNA. It's this, it's that. Remember what we were talking about with John Gruden a few months ago and the racist bone thing? Like, just because you were raised a certain way or you grew up a certain way or whatever it happens to be, that doesn't mean that you're incapable of doing something. And so when I hear stuff like that, that doesn't really mean anything to me. And it may mean something to other people out there or what have you, but you could be raised by anybody. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you, in a certain set of circumstances, are not going to do something untoward. So I just, when I hear something like that, 
that doesn't necessarily mean anything to me. And that's an excellent point. I mean, anyone, no matter what they do, had a mother right. and probably loved her at some point and probably still does. That doesn't mean that you're absolved of potential wrongdoing. And when he says, I wasn't raised that way, the response could be, yes, you weren't raised that way. So what the hell's going on here? You surely weren't. Who's raised that way? Right. Who's, who, who in this world that if they're guilty of doing what he's accused of could say, you know, that's exactly how I was raised. That's mm -hmm. exactly how. That's a defense for anyone. I wasn't raised that way. No, you weren't. Kids aren't raised that way. But sometimes these things happen. Andrew Barry explained some things that we hadn't previously heard before. There was the question about why they haven't engaged the 22 women who are making the complaints. And he said that the lawyers told them, don't do it. You could be potentially interfering with the criminal investigation. So they hired a third party investigator to do it instead, apparently, to fish around and find these things out. I mean, I don't know how you get to the point where you're comfortable without hearing from these individuals. And I don't know if these investigators, I don't know what they did. And he wouldn't say what they did, but they weren't going well, Mike, to engage okay. him uh, directly. Here, here's where, I mean, what, what would it matter? Were the Browns or the Falcons or whatever other of the, you know, 13 teams that expressed interest, were they ultimately not going to do this regardless of what these 22 people said? Because that's the thing that I keep coming back to every time I hear, oh, the Browns didn't, you know, they, they didn't talk to these women. Would it have mattered? I really don't think it would have mattered for any of these teams. I just don't. I, I personally think it was less about what happened in the past and more about exacting a guarantee that it's not going to happen again. Right. Yes. I think that's Absolutely. what it came down to. Yes. The due diligence wasn't about do we believe he did what he's accused of doing. The due diligence was do we think this guy will do it on our watch? Regardless of what mm -hmm. he's done, will he do it once he's an employee of the Cleveland Browns? Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.